I think if we were to compare ourselves to another fruits, right, then I would say we are durians because we're really tough and really sharp on the outside and I mean we can withstand practically anything. I like this generation to be seen as one that is willing to take risks, that is never afraid to try something new and I think that is going to be the defining factor for our generation. I think we are people who are strong, in fact, and we are very independent because we are tech savvy and we have uh, the freedom to learn anything that we want to because of the internet. So we are actually people that are very um, self-driven to learn new things or to make yourself a better person. Many of you do not see yourselves as a strawberry generation. So what are you if you have to compare yourselves to a fruit? How do you want to be perceived? What qualities do you have? Hi, I'm Daniel Martin, and we're here in the School of Film and Media Studies, Neon Polytechnic. I have with me on the panel Pauline Strawn, Associate Professor from the Department of Sociology at NUS, Adrian Tan, Managing Director, Recruit Plus Consulting Private Limited, and Bei Yam King, the father of three, an MP for Tampanese GRC. In the last video segment, Fridawas talked about, you know, maybe employers need to change with the times. Adrian, do a lot of Gen Y feel that way? There's a lot of employers out there, especially in certain industry. Um, they still have not grasped that they really have to reinvent the business model in order to cater to a new generation of workers. There's still company out there that require people to work on a five and a half day basis. So business really have to look inwards to see how they can change the business model in order to cater for the future and also in order to cater to the growing and changing needs of the new generation. Prof Shaw, I'm going to put you on the spot. Let me start us off. If we don't call them strawberries, what fruit would you call them? Guava, watermelon. There's a lot I of would, fruit. I would hate to put I mean, I'm a sociologist, right? We avoid no labeling, <laughs> right? So we're very cautious about, you know, labeling because the label sticks and then takes a life of its own. So, no, I refuse to, <laughs> to come up with a fruit for this generation. What do you all think? I want to throw it open to the, to the crowd. In this time where we are trying, like the world is trying to drop labels, it would be hypocritical and kind of counterproductive if we start labeling generations according to, you know, um, like as a collective, how they are like. If you were to pull out the differences, how do you think Gen Y is different from Gen X and the baby boomers before them? I think one of the biggest differences is that we live in a very digital world. And from there, we have, we're not only competing with people in our country, we are competing worldwide and we can see how, where we stand in, a, in the world. Do you feel that you have to succeed by age 21? If not, you've missed the boat? Less, really? Or you feel, or, um, basically, you feel like you have to do something really different to, you know, stand out. Okay, we are now in the film and media school, right? Um, you know, you have your famous senior now, Anthony Chen. <laughs> right? It's a very uh, good example of the young generation. He he went with passion, right? He came, he chose Nian to study film because he liked film, right? Against his, I think, family's wishes or whatever. So he studied here. He got opportunities. Imagine one, my generation, my parents' generation. There's no film school in Singapore. Nobody learned how to make a film. So people like our, I don't know, Jack Neal or earlier filmmakers, they just learn it on the job. No proper training. Okay, so you have the, the training. But it means that all your graduate as a film director. I'm already a film director, right? If you graduate, and I aspire to make my first film, and I want to win awards because Anthony has paved the way, I hope I will be like him. If, I'm not, if I don't get it on my first debut feature, I will fail. So if this is the expectation you put on yourself, I think most people will be disappointed. And my point is that people must still work hard. The opportunities might be there, the training might be there, but at the end, we must still put in hard work and effort to make it successful. Is there an expectation that that's not needed, Adrian? That maybe young people don't think they have to put in as much hard work as their generations before? I think every generation, every job, you really have to put in hard work, regardless of what role or function you have to play. Miracles doesn't really happen so often, and nobody owe anyone a living. For them now, I think the pressures are even more formidable because, you know, as, as that young lady pointed out, there is a desperate thirst in many young people to want to be different, to want to be significant, because they don't want to be part of the masses, to be average. And right? They might be your students in school, but they might be running their own blog shops outside, they might be starting their own businesses. Or just desperately searching for something to do that will help them to stand out so that they have relevance in this world. I feel that we shouldn't really be defined as any fruit, but if we were to be defined as a fruit, I think it could be a fruit with many seeds inside. Because um, when someone eats us, what we're left behind is many seeds. And just like what Denise said, we are a generation that has a lot of creative, we want to 
stand out, we want to be significant. So we're actually creating jobs. There are many jobs that um, will appear 10 years from now that's never been seen before. So whatever the seeds that we leave behind, it's actually the legend that we bring to society. And we shouldn't really focus on just saying that how a fruit is grown or the texture of it. We should focus on what it can leave us, like seeds. Clarissa, thank you so much for sharing that with us. We're going to find out more in the next segment from the students here at Nian Polytechnic School of Film and Media Studies. Coming up next, Gen Y, as you can see, might not see themselves as the strawberry generation, but that perception still persists. So, how can that stereotype affect them? How can we change it? Hey.